video games and cinematography are, without a shadow of a doubt, the main sources of entertainment in the times we live in, and there's a reason for that. In both of them, we as a customer can choose between a huge library of content as we please. Whether you prefer competitive games to story-based ones or not, and that goes the same for movies, you'll always have something to work with because those are some of the biggest markets in the world. What would you do if you were the first one to mix both concepts together? Hi, I'm 31 Ewe and today we'll take a look at Puppet Combo, a publisher and developer of games with 80s movies aesthetic and how he became so well known in the video gaming community. Puppet Combo, also known as Benedetto Cocuzza, is a male individual in his 30s, who, before establishing his name, decided to start his video game development with a game called Halloween 3D in 2002. Inspired by the film series Halloween, in the first demo of Halloween 3D, we play as Dr. Loomis searching Michael Myers' house, while presumably Myers follows and tries to kill the player. In 2005, an update was made introducing a new camera, weapon system, models and a remake of the house, and in 2010, he updated pathfinding and fixed a bug. Eight years had passed and the game was far from completion, only being a project he would work on any now and then. Later did we know that he had bigger plans for the next years to come by. In 2011, Kokoza decided to take game development to a different level, beginning with the creation of a new website to promote his, at the time, only game. For that matter, he had to create a name for himself, proceeding to use the name Pig Farmer Games from now on. In October of 2011, Halloween 3D received a Halloween update described as I kind of rushed this out in time for Halloween, the entire town of Haddonfield. Some of the building graphics took a dive, but the goal was simply getting a huge map up and running. And also revamp the menus. Given the lack of information, we can only presume that he completely changed the course of the game and decided to which be played as a killer and not a survivor. Between July and August of 2012, there were two updates and the last ones. The first one added the new AI camera and more levels and stating It's actually starting to become a game. And the last one was added the possibility to cut off power of the houses and to turn off lights. And this was the last time Halloween 3D was ever updated. But fortunately, not the last time we heard about Big Farmer Games, because throughout the course of 2012, he uploaded in total three new projects to his website, which were named A Monster with Eyes of Ice, Sanitarium Massacre, and Minotaur. All three of these games had remarkable similarities with his previous game, Halloween 3D, Sanitarium Massacre and the Monster with Eyes of Ice being played as the killer and Minotaur as a survivor. Big Farmer Games also created a YouTube channel and a Twitter account where he would promote his games and other projects he was working on at the time. Even though he was working on three different projects that year, he had a special feeling about Sanitarium Massacre, creating a whole merch around this game, containing CD-ROM, a t-shirt, a cassette, a poster and presumably a handmade figure of the game's killer. Literally did we know that Big Farmer Games was about to become the biggest figure in the VHS slasher games. On the 13th of December of 2013, Big Farmer Productions would upload a trailer of his newest game, Babysitter Bloodbath, a sequel of Halloween 3D, with the following description. For 22 years, Nyoko's Burr has stared at an empty wall in the bowels of Monroe State Mental Hospital, but tonight he's escaped to continue his blood-soaked murder rampage. It's also your first night babysitting. Take care of young Billy while his parents enjoy a night on the town. Talk to your friends on the phone. Invite a cute guy over to watch scary movies. Be stalked, chased, and murdered by the madman from your nightmares. Use your wits and whatever tools and weapons are available. Do whatever it takes to survive the night. The game was a major success. The idea of mixing VHS slasher movies and video games finally caught some attention, as some of the biggest creators, such as Critical, Carrick Scanchin, and even PewDiePie, played the game on their channels. 
Babysitter Bloodbath is fairly similar to his other four games, but with a better atmosphere, better storyline, better gameplay and the fact that it was totally free attracted attention to his work. About the other three games, a most read Eyes of Eyes supposed to come out in 2013, never did. And the other two had supposedly came out in 2013, but the pages they were in were changed to redirect to Babysitter Bloodbath's page since they fit in the same universe. In 2014, Pig Farmer Games released a trailer to his newest game Splatter Camp, also known in the community by Maniac in the Woods. In opposite to his other games, Splatter Camp was based on a different universe, based this time not on the infamous movie series of Halloween, but instead on Friday the 13th. Personally, as a fan of the series, the idea to create a game where we'll be able to openly wander around the summer camp killing or hiding from the killer in such an environment will be awesome in gameplay and enjoyment experience. But unfortunately, development slowed down due to the announcement of the game Friday the 13th the game. It's really sad that Splatter Camp was never released, because another company started doing a licensed game using the real characters from the movies. Big Farmer Games lost months of work with this simple announcement. If your car breaks down, or you get lost in the woods, stay away from the house at the top of the hill, because something evil lurks inside. Behind every door, around every turn, and if you hear somebody behind you, whatever you do, don't turn around. The Power Drill Massacre. After the complete loss of 2014, Big Farmer Games looked at it in the best way and decided to get the best out of the situation. He took advantage of the fanbase yet again with Babysitter Bloodbath and created a Patreon to finally work full time on his passion, remade his entire website and created brand new YouTube, Reddit and iTube accounts. And he would only do that for one reason, to change his name for what we all know him as, Puppet Combo. <laughs> From this point on, Puppet Combo will finally get some money to really live as an indie game developer through Patreon subscribers and by paywalls in his games on iTio. And if you're wondering, why won't it just upload the games on Steam? Steam charges a fee of $100 for each game you submit, so he used iTio since their goal was and still is to promote indie game developers. In the beginning of 2015, now Puppet Combo decided to remake Minotaur, a leftover project abandoned in 2012. With the killer physically based on Michael Myers' appearance, you play as a woman trying to help her unconscious boyfriend who she left in the car after a car crash. She ends up entering a factory and getting trapped inside with a masked killer holding a power drill. This game was another major success being played by the majority of the gameplay and commentary community on YouTube. Even recent internet celebrities such as XQC played Power Drill Massacre. Throughout 2016, Puppet Combo worked on three different projects, the first one being Burnt Alive, whose objective was to survive the attack of a large person in a fireman suit in an early hotel along with your friends. The game was short-lived. Apparently, the game was lost, as stated in this thread. Could have been a computer change, a PC reset with no backups, a broken hard disk, we don't know. Next up is Meat Cleaver Mutilator. With no correlation with his previous games, we, as a victim, must kill the mutilator to unlock the exit. The game has, in a way, better design models and an inventory system, but ended up not standing out as much as his past successes. At the end of the year, Puppet Combo made the sort of a prototype game called Texas Butcher. The development of the game has been in standby since 2016, however, a remake has been made using the same concept. <laughs> 
2017 was much like 2016, three games and only one was completely released, Bus Saw Blood House, Peach Fork Massacre and the well known The Night Reaper. Bus Saw Blood House is based on Red Rooms, deep web live streams where the viewers get entertained by watching someone getting tortured, typically against their will. The game was left on post since then, probably to never be touched again. There's not much information about Peach Fork Massacre aside the few tweets about it. Apparently the game takes place at a house party where people suddenly started to disappear and the main character is a woman named Amy. The game has been since on pause to work on the final game of 2017, The Night Reaper. Inspired by the stories of Jack the Reaper, The Night Reaper we follow Rachel on her late night walk home while being stalked by The Night Reaper. The main objective is to scavenge the city for change to use the payphone and call her roommate to retreat home, all while being followed by the Night Reaper. The game received ok attention from the general public and is now one of the symbols of his merchandising and online legacy. will be by far the year with more activity, not only in game projects but with communication with the community through Patreon and Twitter, posting more than twice a day for the most part of the year. Let's start by looking at the games that are currently in development, those being Planet of Bloodthirsty Santa and Stay Out of the House. Saying the games are currently in development is a little bit misleading, that only means that Puppet Como has access to the project files but chooses to focus on other projects instead and will probably never see these games fully completed. Anyway, Planet of Bloodthirsty Sandu tells the story of Beth and her crew landing on an inhabited snow planet with the goal of finding four minerals and take off. Like the Night Reaper from 2017, your goal is to scavenge the planet while being hunted down by Santa. The game has a well plotted story which was left unfinished since this year. Stay Out of the House is a game pretty similar to Granny. The player is stuck inside the house and has to complete tasks and puzzles to escape. Besides never leaving the demo phase, Stay Out of the House is really well made. The main house is huge, the killer AI is really creative and the map has an outside area even. For a game that was not finished, having such a big map, good killer and interesting lore is really impressive, as stated by him in this Patreon page. Creating environments probably takes up like 65% of my time. Meaning that it's such a shame that he has put so much love in this game just to never finish it, but nevertheless it's still a great game and the gaming community still loves it to this date. Little did I know that a future game was about to come out in 2022. Spiders. In a first glance it's a totally different game compared to his other games. Spiders is a first person FPS survival horror game where you need to protect your family from waves of spiders. The game has a variety of weapons to use and a barricade system to prevent spiders from entering the house. The game never got that big of attention. Such a simple story and objective wasn't enough to get mainstream attention. It's still a good first person shooter that will make the difference in games later to come out. Night Shift takes place in a gas station. The player assumes the position of the cashier and does menial tasks as atmosphere is built all around as events starts to scatter around the gas station. Using a normal job to create such a heavy atmosphere and unsettling environment was not very known in 2018, making this game an amazing shot in this genre to this date. Feed Me Billy is still one of the most scary, unsettling and strange games from Puppet Combo. Its description. A flashing hole has appeared in your closet. It's your job to fit it. You must, no matter what the cost. Terrorize the town on your sea quest for meat in this deranged serial killer simulator. In the game we follow Billy, one of the main killers Puppet Combo uses in his games, in his quest to feed a giant flesh eating mouth looking hole in the ground. The way he does that is by grabbing his gun and mask, hopping in his truck and murdering people and then he brings their corpses to the hole and drops them. Throughout the game, as we enter people's homes, we see everyone reacting differently. Some people run away from the killer, some start screaming uncontrollably and some just completely freeze in place. Puppet Combo had placed us in many different environments before, where we had to kill, to run, to scavenge and to work, but the way we control the killer and mercilessly kill people doing their normal life activities, such as using an ATM, is so unsettling and creepy. One of the best games ever made by Puppet Combo. 
And in the last but not least, Nun Massacre, also known as Night of the Nun, tells the story of Mrs. McDonald going to pick her daughter up after she fell ill at her Catholic boarding school. As she is driving, a storm blows in and the road gets blocked, forcing her to continue by foot. Upon entering the boarding school, Mrs. McDonald realizes that she is stuck inside with a psychopathic nun and has to do whatever it takes to leave the building. A captivating story, together with five different endings and interesting characters, made Nun Massacre as popular as his other viral games, Babysitter Bloodbath and Power Drill Massacre. The first game announced in 2019 was Blood Maniac, the follow-up of Texas Butcher, which never got released. Having really strong similarities between each other, Blood Maniac takes place in a town after the killer Larry escaped from a mental hospital. The game has really interesting scenarios and car physics, but never left the development stage. Even after Puppet Como himself stated that he personally liked this game and Feed Me Billy out of them all. It's been a long time since you've seen your parents, hasn't it? Not to worry, girls. Just listen to the voice on the intercom. Do what he said. They've provided you a home. They've provided you food. They will make you into good girls. This old house has never treated you wrong, has it? Now be good girls, all of you. The master will need you to be strong during these troubling times. Remember, good girls take their medicine. Good girls do their chores. Good girls go home. In the glass staircase, we take control of four endurance servant girls as they do their assigned chores in an empty mansion following false promises of their freedom. Three of them end up disappearing, leaving only one remaining to escape. The glass staircase was by far the longest game Puppet Combo had ever made, taking more than an hour for a new player to finish, when the others took approximately 20 minutes. The game was overwhelmingly received with open arms. The fact that it was a long game is due to how easy it is to get lost in such a big environment. Mixing together with the little animations between each door made the game feel longer than an hour. However, the story being creeping and unsettling brought some attention and still gets, to this date, a special place in Puppet's combo library of games. Months later, the Riverside Incident was announced, a found footage type game where a group of hikers found a videotape in a garbage bag and we play as if we were the taped video. A creative idea with bigger story than it seems and definitely a short game worth playing. In 2019, Puppet Como started producing and promoting games with same or similar style to his own. One of them, and the first, being Search Party. Search Party is a 2D game developed by Lum, whose story is about Claire looking for his 80-year-old brother and ending up inside a strange house with a maniac inside trying to kill her. On the 29th of June, Puppet Como would post a new game teaser to his YouTube channel. His take on the concept has been blowing up in the gaming and cinematography communities for the last year. What I find really interesting is by looking at Google Trends, looks like this teaser was announced in the first spike of Backroom's popularity. Whether that was the cause of its success or not, we're not sure, but it surely is interesting. Weeks later, Puppet Combo will promote the second game, Tonight It Follows. Inspired by Silent Hill and taking place in a cemetery, the game is a 2D fast-paced horror game, taking about 10 minutes to complete including cutscenes and dialogues. It's a fairly simple game with a morbid atmosphere and scenes that I can't really show on video. The next game Puppet Combo announced was Evil Clowns, a game openly inspired by the 1998 arcade game Carn Evil, where you have to collect a specific amount of coins and head to the exit with only 8 given lives. The game has 4 different enemies and 3 of them are from previous games, Bongo the Clown Doll from Non Massacre, Billy from Feed Me Billy and the Night Shift Abductor from Night Shift. On the 9th of September, Puppet Combo would upload a strangely familiar game teaser by the name of Day 7, Psychological PSX Horror.
Day 7, as seen, was the final version of his previous game The Backrooms. Unlike most developers doing backroom based games, Puppet Como wanted to use the concept without directly patronizing by it, changing the name of the game and never mentioning backrooms in descriptions and so on. Puppet Como wanted the game to turn out well for its characteristics, gameplay and story, and not by using a trend. Even with the effort to create a story and full on dialogues for the game, it's Puppet Como's least liked game, as stated by him, but on the end of the day, it's still a great game and is definitely worth playing. After Day 7 was released, Scary Tales Vol. 1 was the very next thing to come out to the public, an official bundle with 4 of his own games, Night Shift, Spiders, Feed Me Billy and the Riverside Incident. Not only is it a bundle, but it has its own story mode, where the player must play the tapes to continue, each tape being one of the games. Whether the games chosen have any correlation with each other or not is for the player to decide, as Puppet Combo does his best to keep it a secret. Then a game called Samhain was announced. The game takes place on a Halloween night and follows Alice, the older sister whose objective is to take her brothers trick or treating, with a simple rule. Stay on the trail and don't talk to strangers. Little is known and talked about this game and, as you watch the final scene, makes it even more mysterious. And to end his absolute biggest year in game development so far, he announced these trees are Spectral Fingers, a horror game developed by Kavka, a game about a man who, after his car broke on the highway, tries to find a way to get help in the middle of nowhere and surrounded by age-old trees. The game never received much attention, but it was great to see Puppet Como promoting games from other game developers. outskirts of society. Alright, let's get started. We don't have all day. Once host to the most heinous of crimes. Yeah, Emma, make yourself useful and find us a way in. Crimes so disturbing that few dare to recall them. Anthony Smith, more commonly known as the Easter Ripper. In 2020, Puppet Como will promote another three games, Sky Freak by Jordan King, The Enigma of Salazar House and Night of the Clowns developed by Torture Star Video. 30 on you from the future here. After two weeks into producing this video, I just found out that Torture Star Video is a publishing label from Puppet Combo created in June of 2020. Just needed to say that before going any further. Let's continue. Sky Freak is a 2D horror game which takes place in a snowy mountain village whose security has been compromised by a giant monster. The game has 4 playable characters which can all either die or survive. The player must keep their distance from the monster and not get hit by the monster while skiing. The game has 4 different endings and each character has its own plot and lore. The Enigma of Salazar House, renamed The Horror of Salazar House, is a point-and-click horror game created by Maldo19. The game has interesting art style and puzzles, most of the puzzles being overall not that hard. However, besides being a point-and-click, it's something that you will think about for a while after playing. Night of the Clowns is a reboot of the game Evil Clowns, a puppet combos game launched in 2019, now being developed by Torture Star Video. Night of the Clowns is still in development till this day, having only a prototype version available to the public. We've seen the games that Puppet Combo published in 2020, now let's take a look at the games Puppet Combo himself developed. Nightwatch Nightwatch follows park ranger Jim, who was assigned on watch duty on top of the tower in the middle of the park, his job being to watch out for fires and guide any hikers in trouble or lost. Much like Night Shift from 2018, the game uses a normal job to build atmosphere around the player as strange things start to happen. There are three possible endings, and it is believed, in the universe of Puppet Combo's games, that this game was the start of the Driller Killer's legacy in Power Drill Massacre. On the 23rd of October, we'll be surprised with a YouTube notification. Murder House, out on Steam. PS1 Slasher Horror. 
the first ever puppet combo game released on Steam, which tells the story of a news crew breaking into an abandoned house of an executed serial killer with the plan of shooting a haunted house story, but eventually they found out that the killer isn't dead in any way, shape or form. The story of this game is absolutely massive when compared to his other games taking over 2 hours to finish. It has a prologue, which is the start of the game, and then the whole story about the news crew. At the time, people were surprised when they finished the prologue to be more gameplay into it, as his other games took about 20 minutes to complete. The game became popular rapidly, reaching over 4k purchases on Steam and no less in stream viewers, as popular Twitch and YouTube streamers started playing and trending his game. Puppetcombo even announced the game for Xbox One Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 and 5, as he already intended to. If you watching have never heard of Puppetcombo and want to try out something from him, the majority will recommend you to play Murder House. You're going to die tonight. What? Oh my god. In 2021, very little was announced by Puppet Como, starting off with the complete success that was Bloodwash, featuring the Womb Reaper. Bloodwash by Jordan King is a horror game about Sarah, a pregnant college student in a way to wash her clothes in the laundromat late at night, with a serial killer targeting pregnant woman. The game was almost as successful as Murder House, Puppet Combo's game announced one year earlier, a really interesting game following Puppet Combo's art style and storytelling techniques. Christmas Massacre was announced mid-December to celebrate Christmas. The game has the same gameplay style as Texas Butcher 2016 and the follow-up Blood Maniac 2019, and features the same main character, Larry. Larry is known in Puppet Combo's games for being a completely mentally insane character, perfect for horror games. In Christmas Massacre, the player has to enter in numerous houses and kill everyone inside before leaving. It is similar to Feed Me Billy from 2018, but not as much unsettling and creepy. In the last year of them all for now, 2022, to this date, three games had gone out, none of them developed by Puppet Combo, but they are, nonetheless, interesting games to say the least. The Booty Creek Chick Freak takes place in a camping site with a questionable killer stalking them. It's hard to rate this game out of every game we've looked at, but I will say that this game is interesting to say the least. Not at the Gates of Hell is a survival horror game to come out in September 15th. The objective is to survive a so-called apocalypse by collecting weapons, finding survivors and overall fighting the hordes of the undead. And for the last but not least, Deadly Night. Besides the other two games which were developed by Jordan King, Deadly Night was developed by Cubite Games and it's the first game that Puppet Combo has ever published to ever be censored for nudity. Besides creating games, throughout the years Puppet Combo has been working with different people and companies to create diverse items and content for his games. First of all, music and soundtracks. Murder House, for example, has a 30 song soundtrack, all on Spotify, published by Chamber of Screams in collab with Clement Panchout on the MaxXN. Some of the songs included could be heard throughout this video. Puppet Combo also has his own store, where he sells a bunch of different clothing and items, such as posters, stickers, phone cases and also his books. Puppet Combo has novelizations of the three most popular games of his, Murder House, Nun Massacre and Babysitter Bloodbath. If you're interested in any games that we have talked so far, for less than $10 you can access every single project Puppet Combo has ever announced in his Patreon. Just a warning, some of the games he published are only available on Steam and its developer's website. And that's how Puppet Combo became so well known, exploring a game genre that no one was doing at the time. There's a list of lost games and little things that Puppet Combo started working on and gave up the idea, but there's just so much of them, so I decided to only mention the most important games. I really hope you appreciate this kind of video as I really want to start producing big content like this in the future. Bye.